Hi, and thanks so much for tuning in to Woodstock Community Television. I'm Nikki McCallum here on day two of the Vermont Film Festival. So excited to be joined by the one and only David Finkelstein. He is the creator of the film Balancing on a Molecule, which is it's an animated film. Is it that is, yes. Great. Would love to hear a little bit about your film. Okay, well... The, the genre of the film is what's known as experimental avant-garde. So cool. that means, uh, you know, for anyone who's not familiar with that genre, that it, it's filmmaking that came out of the visual art and sound art world. So it's often, uh, as in my film, more poetic, abstract. Uh, my film, for example, doesn't have a story or consistent characters. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, got a lot of language. The language is, it doesn't tell a story though, it's kind of poetic language and uh, continuous music, which I also composed, wow. and continuous animation that I also created. So that's another tradition of, of avant-garde experimental films is they're artist films that are often largely made by one person. Interesting. And in the creation of this, what kind of what order did you create these things in? Because you just mentioned several different art forms, the, yes. the poetry, the music. Yes. What? How did you sculpt this? What came first? Great, great question. Because it's it's a it's a layered process. Um, the first s s uh, step was to you know record create the dialogue with me and another actor, Ian W. Hill, uh, which was all completely improvised dialogue. So when we started, we didn't know what was going to come out of our mouths. Uh, so then we have the dialogue. The next step was to compose the music, which goes underneath the, the, the text and uh, is a kind of emotional, rhythmic response to that. Uh, so then I have a whole soundtrack for the film without any picture. And then the last stage was to create animation that's also a response to, to the text. And so th that whole process takes maybe nine, ten months. Wow. And is this, you and Ian, have you worked on other projects together? Or We've worked on time? a lot of projects. We've been working together for years. So uh, we have a, a, a technique of improv improvisation that, we, that I developed and I taught to him. And we studied it together for years. Uh, so there, there's a lot of history behind being able to just open your mouth and, and, and have a spontaneous dialogue come out. Yeah. And is Ian also a local? You were mentioning that you're from East Barnard, so I right around from the East corner. Bar but no, he's not. He's from New York City, okay. where I used to live, and that's Great. where I uh, met him. And that's actually where we shot this footage. Wow. So it was shot in New York. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And you and I were chatting earlier. You mentioned there was an interesting process with the, the financing for the film. The, yes. Uh, it was interesting to me because it, it's typical for experimental films that there's no possible source of funding for them because they're not commercial. They're like this film, this kind of film will never make a penny. So people don't invest in them uh, you know, because they're, they're not money-making films. Uh, so... Typically, experimental filmmakers are, you know, loan artists that just self-finance. Uh, but I was blessed and honored to, just in 2022, receive a really, really generous artist grant, which was a, a, a Guggenheim Fellowship in filmmaking. Oh, wow. And uh, that uh, was mm, the first kind of substantial funding I'd ever received for my work. And it changed everything because it was so generous. And... And one of the things that's changing is uh, I now have the ability to go to screenings of this film in different places. Uh, I mean, it's not hard for me to come here since I live 25 minutes away. But uh, because of this, I've been able to go to screenings of this film and other films in, in Mexico, in France, in um, California, in Missouri, a lot of places, um, which I wouldn't have had the funding to do before. So it's... Uh, I'm so grateful to the Guggenheim Foundation for that. That's excellent. 
Back to that explain. And what do you hope people take away from your film when they see it, given that it's such a unique piece? Uh, this particular film, I, I refer to it as a series of video rituals. Uh, and there's actual rituals that, that uh, unfold in it. Uh, there, there's a feeling that uh, at, at a ritual, you just as in improvisation itself, you open yourself up, your intuition to forces that come from, we don't even know where they come from. And uh, sometimes it's very enlightening, sometimes it's very chaotic. So that's one of the reasons it's called balancing on a molecule because there's a whole balancing act in it. And, yeah. and I just hope people viscerally have that experience while listening to the music and, and, and watching the animation and hearing the dialogue. Excellent. Well, I can't wait to see it. I'm so excited. It's at 10 p.m. this evening, Friday night. I'll be there with my popcorn, my maple butter popcorn, at the Pentangle Theater. David, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's it, a pleasure. It is my pleasure and can't wait for Balancing on a Molecule.